My name is Jocelyn LeBlanc. I'm a technician in Lions On's lab. And so I'm studying hematopoiesis and zebrafish. So we're trying to learn more about hematopoiesis, especially, so this is a um, general hematopoiesis um, sort of schematic. And so you start with a long-term um, hematopoietic stem cell, which can self-renew, and it can also make um, a short-term stem cell, which then can make progenitors, um, a lymphoid progenitor and a myeloid progenitor. And then these respectively make um, lymphoid or myeloid cells. And so we're very interested in this beginning part of um, how a HSC can make progenitors, which then make the differentiated cells. Irradiate uh, wild type fish at 25 gray two days before transplantation. And so then we have a clean system um, and we can transplant in donor marrow from um, fluorescent transgenic donors. And then we can, this way we can watch the cells that we transplant in and see if they can repopulate the blood. On day of transplant, sacrifice appropriate number of fluorescent donors in trichine. Just wait until the, you can't see the gills moving anymore. So I just put this on a, I just use a dish like this, just a platform. And then make a small cut right below its belly. And then I can insert the scissors and cut down the belly like this. So now it's cut all the way down. open and then with the other one pull out the other organs. So the kidney is along the back of the fish. I'm going to take my good pair of forceps and sort of grab it at the top and then it peels off coming down and sort of strip. Now I'm just going to transfer it to a, a conical tube, and I'm just going to put that up and down to break up the kidney pieces. Break up with 10 mil syringe and 18 and a half gauge needle. Transfer to a tube and fill up with PBS solution. Spin down at 1500 RPM. It's about this pretty Put some PBS in and suspend. 40 micron cell strainer. You want to um, and then strain through the strainer and it will catch any big pieces that you have. Um, pour out, resuspend in one mil PBS plus. Count cells. <coughs> Calculate um, number of cells to transplant. Okay. Sacrifice fish in trichine. Coat pipette tip with heparin. Stab through gill with pipette tip. Add blood to PPS solution. Spin down. Resuspend. Spin down again. Filter through 40 micron filter. Count cells as with the whole kidney marrow. So I'm going to fill the syringe up with cells to 5 microliters, making sure that there's no bubbles in the syringe. The fish will be anesthetized in trichane before injection. 
for the injection, inject five microliters of the whole kidney marrow and peripheral blood solution into the heart of each recipient using a Hamilton syringe. And then I'm gonna insert the syringe a little ways back. The heart is about here, so that's where I wanna end up. I'm gonna poke it in, staying very shallow. And then I'm gonna poke around right here where the heart is. Um, and sometimes you see a burst of blood, which means you hit the heart, sometimes you don't. I'm not seeing any blood, so I'm just gonna inject. That's it. Keep fish off flow for one week to avoid infection. Um, keep about five to 10 fish per cage, removing dead each day, and manually change water each day. So the kidney marrow is where the where we think that the um, stem cells reside, and that's where they make their progeny. So it's sort of like the bone marrow in humans. So when we do bone marrow transplants in humans, it's the same exact idea. When we transplant them into the heart of the animal, um, this just we've tried different ways. This is the most effective way to get the cells into circulation. Um, so the kidney marrow is where uh, the HSC can form all of its progeny. And so the HSCs have to find their way to the kidney marrow, and so they can do this through the circulation. If we do get repopulation of the marrow, then we know that we transplanted in a long-term hematopoietic stem cell, because that's the only cell that can repopulate and make all of these um, cells. That's what we're most interested in. So I would definitely say the actual injection. That takes a lot of practice. Um, a lot of fish will die, and um, basically trying to get it into the heart, which you're not always sure if you are getting it into the heart, since it's very hard to see, um, and also just not killing the fish with the injection. So um, you, when you're injecting, you could hit other internal organs, which can cause death, um, or they can get an infection after the um, injection. So one thing we're trying so usually a lot of the fish will die the day after the injection. And so what we're trying now is to keep everything as sterile as possible so we don't put the fish back onto the flow, back onto the system water, because there could be, um, they could get infections from the water that way. So we keep them separate, we change the water every day. Um, and we're thinking about maybe adding some antibiotics to the water, stuff like that, just to keep them healthier during those their crucial times right after the transplant. So we can use it um, to study mutants. Um, if we think a mutant has a defect in their stem cells, we can transplant in marrow from them into wild type fish, or we can transplant in wild type marrow into those fish and see if there's some sort of problem with the stem cells themselves or the stem cell niche. So if for some reason the stem cells can't find their way to the kidney marrow, then that would be a problem. And so we could um, measure that based on whether the fish can engraft or not.